Hey there, welcome to Old Man Runner. In today's video, I'm going to look at this, the Sim Alpe 864 Drop Evolution Shoe. I made a previous video, which I'll link there, which uh, shows me running around Dublin and giving my general impressions of the shoe. The shoe has a unique feature in that you can change the drop from eight to six to four millimeters on the shoe. And today I'm going to explain a little bit about what drop is, how it works, and then at the end, see if I think in this shoe it's uh, a gimmick or whether it's really effective. At this point in the videos, I usually tell you why I bought a particular shoe. But in this instance, Simalpe sent it to me to review. Uh, but I'm excited to do it because I am interested in heel drop and being able to use a shoe that varies from eight to six to four is uh, really handy. Let's demonstrate stack height using uh, this simple device, which uh, is plastic. Uh, so bones here is uh, the heel and the toes are flat on the table. There's zero difference between them. There's zero drop. Now, if I was to take this piece of wood, stick it on, there's a stack height at the heel and at the toe, but there's no difference in it. The stack is level. So there is zero drop from there to there. So our foot is still level as it would be if it was running on the ground or stationary on the ground. But I could change the stack height here is taller than here. But again, the heel drop is the same. Zero between the heel and the toes. I take this trusty little wedge, you will see that there's a different uh, heel stack height to toe stack height and our friend Bones is at an angle. Now that's what happens in different shoes. This angle varies. Now it could be zero drop. So Ultra make a zero drop shoe uh, and they promote a zero drop being more natural because as I'm standing here in a pair of socks, I'm at a zero heel drop. They think it's more natural. Most running shoes are not zero drop and they have a different series of stack heights and drops. So this is my famous trusty old Brooks Transcend shoe and this has a 10 millimeter drop. It has a 27 millimeter height at the heel and it has a um, 17 at the front and a 10 millimeter drop overall. This shoe has exactly the same drop 10 millimeters. It's the Craft uh, CTM Ultra Carbon but it's got a stack height of 40 millimeter at the back. And that's the maximum allowable by World Athletics. And the higher you go up in, in terms of stack height, uh, the more, I guess, wobbly the shoe could get. And we discussed that in a previous video. If we take this, which is half of a Carbon X shoe, uh, you can see what the shoe looks like when you, when, you, when you take a cross section through it. And what you notice is that, yes, there's a, there's a stack height at the heel, but then it rises, then it goes down. And it's at this point, and this point that they're typically measured. And the drop across this shoe is five mil, but of course the shoe flexes. So it changes as you're in motion. So what the Malpe are trying to do is provide you with a shoe in which you can set the parameter of the heel drop yourself. And they do that by means of these three inserts. So there is a four millimeter, a six millimeter and an eight millimeter drop insert that you put into the shoe. Now I can easily tell which is which by the feel. By just feeling these, yeah, I can tell that this is thinner than this, this is thicker than this. It's all very easy to feel with your fingers. Now, two millimeter doesn't seem like a lot of difference between the eight, the six and the four, um, but I've spent a, a long time designing staircases. If you have the, the combination of the tread and riser out by even a millimeter, people will notice. We're, we're very adept at, at, at judging uh, things. Uh, so I can very easily feel the difference between these. Now, I couldn't tell you how thick they were, but I can tell you one is thicker than the other, which is thicker than the other. The, the body is an amazing measuring instrument. So what's the difference between all of them? Well, let's go back to bones. Okay. So you have, here he is with zero drop and you've got a, a, an Achilles tendon running up here. When you have the, uh, when you're, when there's a drop, there's less pressure on the tendon here, but as this drops, it's tensioning. You're tensioning up your Achilles tendon. That's essentially why uh, there is a difference between the drops that you run in different shoes. Now, some people believe that, that if you relieve pressure on your, on your, Ankles, you simply get it on your knee. And as someone who's had an arthroscopy on my knee, that may be the case. But it does have a significant effect down at the bottom because of what's happening with your Achilles tendon. So if you take this as a 10 millimeter drop shoe, and then you were to run in this, which is a five millimeter drop shoe, that's a, a bit of a difference. But if you went from say, 
Uh, Brooks make models at 12 millimeter drop, and then I think there's some at 14, and then you get out to Altra at zero. That's quite a range. And what Simalpe or Simalpe are trying to do in this shoe is provide you with a way of stepping down. People typically fall into heel strikers and midfoot strikers and forefoot strikers, and there's a lot of different views as to whether it's a good or bad thing. Personally, I think just you should run the way your foot naturally lands. And I did what I usually do. I put the eight millimeter in one shoe, the, the four millimeter in the other, ran around the block uh, to see what could you feel a difference. Yes, you can. It's very easy to feel, feel the difference. And I did it in alternate shoes. Uh, I then went out and ran in the eight millimeter in the previous video and enjoyed myself immensely. Uh, and then I also ran the same sort of distance uh, in a two millimeter drop just to see what, or a four millimeter drop to see what the difference was. So the experiment where I went out and I ran in uh, eight millimeter and four millimeter guys was inconclusive. Um, I was trying to see if my foot angle would be different, if that when I wore the, the four millimeter version that my foot strike would be more mid strike than, than heel strike. I don't think it's conclusive. I think they both look pretty much the same. I'll play them here now. There's the eight millimeter and the four millimeter, the eight millimeters on the left, the fours on the right. Um, but I'm running very short distances up to the camera because I didn't want to leave an expensive camera lying around a couple of GoPros. Uh, ideally, you'd run a kilometer and then run past the camera. And ideally, again, I'm trying to get into the focus shot. So I'm trying to land on a particular area, give or take. Um, and I think that interferes with the, with the whole experiment. But what it does show is me, me landing and taking off. But I don't think uh, you, your body would just adjust that, that quickly to it. I think you need to have a longer run at it. But I do think it's a very good idea to have a shoe that allows you to either vary it because because you don't want to get um, in stuck in a particular uh, um, and, and risk repetitive strain because you're always at the same angle. I think it's a good idea to vary it. Probably a good idea in a, in a trail shoe anyway to have low stack height, but also uh, typically they have low heel drop uh, because of the differences in the terrain you're running across. Now, because of my nature, I, I also piled up several of them in together and, and I added the eight and the four together uh, just to see what that would be like. And of course, it was super cushy. I mean, they fit. It was super cushy. And of course, you could take the ones out of this and pop them into another shoe. The question I posed at the start is, is this just a gimmick? Well, I don't think it is. I mean, you'll know if you watched the previous video that, that I liked the shoe um, and I liked running around and then it's eight millimeter guys. Um, I do think the idea of, of being able to change things is, is good. I mean, I, I like the idea of, of varying it up. I like the idea that on for longer runs, you might, you might take the cushier version than the shorter runs. And of course, I do think it will depend whether you're running in mud, on rock, on all different kinds of surfaces. So I look at it as an added bonus to the shoe. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. As always, I'll put some descriptions below. And if you have any questions, pop them in the comments section and I'll do my best to answer them. There'll be a blue subscribe button popping up there and some associated videos popping up there. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep running along.